Looking for a guaranteed way to create content that resonates with your audience? Start a podcast, interview your ideal clients, and let them choose the topic of the interview. Because if your ideal clients care about the topic, there's a good chance the rest of your audience will care about it too. Learn more at sweetfishmedia.com. You're listening to B2B Growth, a daily podcast for B2B leaders. We've interviewed names you've probably heard before, like Gary Vaynerchuk and Simon Sinek, but you've probably never heard from the majority of our guests. That's because the bulk of our interviews aren't with professional speakers and authors. Most of our guests are in the trenches leading sales and marketing, implementing strategy. They're experimenting with tactics. They're building the fastest growing B2B companies in the world. My name is James Carberry. I'm the founder of Sweetfish Media, a podcast agency for B2B brands, and I'm also one of the co-hosts of this show. When we're not interviewing sales and marketing leaders, you'll hear stories from behind the scenes of our own business. We'll share the ups and downs of our journey as we attempt to take over the world. Just kidding. Well, maybe. Let's get into the show. Welcome back to the B2B Growth Show. I'm your host for today's episode, Logan Lyles, Director of Partnerships here at Sweetfish. I am joined today by Todd Koonsman. He is the Head of Marketing at Everyone Social. Todd, how are you doing today, man? I'm good, man. Thanks for having me. A pleasure to have you. Uh, Enjoyed our last chat offline and was really excited uh, that you agreed to be a guest on the show. I'm excited to hear from your personal story of uh, taking on a a new marketing department with a new company and thinking through how do I align everybody? What strategies do we go after first and kind of prioritizing everything? Before we get into that, Todd, let's uh, give the audience a little bit of background on yourself. And I would love for you to share a little bit about what you and the team at Everyone Social are up to. Sure. So I'm the head of marketing for Everyone Social. I've been with the team about a year and a half now. We're simply an employee advocacy and social selling platform. So we help turn your organization into a powerhouse. Uh, the simple way to think of it is really a central hub slash newsreader for all employees to access company content, field marketing materials, personal content. Uh, and then employees can share that stuff on their social networks and communicate with other employees in different departments. So we kind of work with bigger marketing and sales, HR and communications teams. Uh, and just an example, some clients we have uh, Adobe, Dell, Indeed, Electronic Arts, SurveyMonkey, and a lot of other companies that are kind of worldwide at this point. Very nice. You guys are doing some really cool stuff. I know from our last conversation. So uh, excited to uh, to hear that and have you on, Todd. Well, let's dive right in, man. Um, I think a lot of marketers are going to get some value from this conversation. You know, marketers and salespeople have no shortage of uh, tech stack tools and things that they could be doing from content to podcasting to the blog to paid media. And oftentimes, especially if you're undertaking a new role, it can be overwhelming deciding how to prioritize things and where to start. So tell us a little bit about where you started and identifying some of the business challenges when you came in to head up the marketing department with your organization. Sure. So, I mean, marketing consists of so many things. I mean, you can be an expert in multiple points of, of marketing. I mean, there's content marketing, social media marketing, all the paid stuff. Uh, there's just so many things. And really, any company, even like a smaller startup like us, who's, it's still important to kind of have your hand in, in everything. Um, but what it really comes down to is you just need to pick like maybe three or four that are really going to, you know, give you the best results, and the ROI on, on your time. Um, so for us, you know, coming in, I got to work directly with the CEO in sales, which I think was a big, big starting point for for me specifically. Um, so a big challenge for us was, you know, brand visibility was one thing. So uh, a lot of times we just weren't in the conversation, and a lot of people said, you know, if we knew about you, we probably would have chosen you. And uh, you know, we've been fortunate enough to work with a lot of great companies, but sometimes they just don't know we exist, and it can be disheartening uh, being a company where. You have a great product and a great team, but just people aren't really aware of you. And on top of that, you know, we have maybe 10 or 12 competitors in the space, three of which have a huge brand machine behind them already. It's kind of like their subsidiary product. So we're fighting that kind of thing. And then, you know, employee advocacy and social selling is kind of a new space still, and it's still kind of growing. Uh, there's interest, but yet there's only a limited search volume. So we're all kind of fighting for that space. So 
we had that challenge with with brand visibility. So that was kind of one thing I knew going into, you know, being able to kind of lead the marketing for the team. And then, you know, we wanted to be the leader in the space. So we've we're probably one of the first original kind of companies to do this kind of stuff. And we need to be seen that we are the leader in this space, that we know what we're talking about, that companies should trust us and go to us for the innovation. So another good good topic point to start with there. And then I think the last part of that is with any company, uh, just lead gen, you know, generating more leads, but more importantly, the quality of the leads uh, and ensuring we're kind of having a good marketing flow of, of leads that sales can have conversations with and that we can kind of educate on what we do. Mm-hmm. So you recognize the brand visibility problem competing with some other folks in your space that that have a massive brand machine, as, as you put it. And then because it's a it's a maturing market, there's there are some demand gen issues. A lot of the the things that you're trying to rank for, things like that, maybe aren't widely searched just yet. So tell us a little bit about your next steps, getting to know the customers and the industry that you're in, given the challenges that you identified early on, Todd. Yeah, so I think, you know, marketing people, we get real excited. I know I do to just jump right in, start executing and, and you know, putting some results out for your company. But a lot of times that, and I've learned over the years to just really take a step back from that excitement because you can easily overlook things or a strategy you might think is going to work. You could have wasted a lot of time if you just did some research in the background. So, you know, after kind of knowing these points that set us up, me to kind of learn a little bit more. So, I connected with our sales team, and I think we see tons of articles and and thought leaders talking about why marketing and sales needs to work together. But especially for B two B and kind of our SaaS platform, this made so much sense that they they're closely with customers, buyers, prospects. You know, they know who these job titles are, who these people are that are you know we need to target. So I sat in on a couple of demo requests and just kind of learned about the job titles that were coming through and. That helped me kind of build, you know, buyer personas. We we knew who our buyers were, but we never actually really built it out into kind of like an Excel sheet that had real a lot of details, like their challenges, you know, what are their duties, who are they reporting to, uh, that kind of stuff. So talking to sales was was a key factor in trying to understand, you know, the next step for our strategies. But even more importantly than that, too, was also talking to the client success team and understanding how customers are viewing it. So you know, even though they might have been a prospect at one point and they kind of fit. You know certain criteria there. Their things and challenges can change too as as they're using your, our software and trying to understand the industry. So I want to make sure you know I'm not just marketing to the, the buyers, but also to the customers because there's upsell opportunities, there's renewal for contracts, all that kind of fun stuff. And then with that, you kind of have to understand the industry. So I didn't really know what employee advocacy was or social selling was when I came in, you know, to the company. This was a whole new space for me. If it's a new space for me, it's probably a new space for a lot of other people. So I need to really research the industry, who's talking about us, who's talking about the industry as a whole, you know, employee advocacy, social selling, what's the search volume on a lot of the key terms we might be trying to target. All of these things kind of combined in one really start setting the tone for where you need to go in the strategy. And I think it's the most, probably one of the most important things to know to any kind of strategy. Today's growth story is about one of the world's largest cloud cybersecurity firms. Their challenge? To build and execute a global demand generation strategy. Fortunately, this firm tackled their challenge by joining forces with a marketing partner that delivered a dynamic display campaign that was aligned to the sales and marketing efforts of target accounts. The results? The cybersecurity firm saw a 120% increase in their global display click-through rate. And here's the big one. They generated $39 in their pipeline for every $1 spent on predictive display. So what kind of partner can deliver these results? MRP Prolytics. MRP Prolytics is an insights-powered account-based marketing platform with streaming predictive analytics baked into its core. Integrating multi-channel ABM execution on these insights, MRP Prolytics triggers display, email, direct mail, and global inside sales in real time, helping the largest marketing departments in the world deliver the right message to their customers at just the right time. Can MRP Prolytics get similar results for you? Probably. Find out by visiting mrpfd.com or click the link in the episode description of this interview. All right, let's get back to the show. Uh, I love what you're talking about there, Todd, with building out your buyer personas, looking at prospects, but also talking to customer success to learn about the challenges and the feedback that you're 
different clients because a lot of marketing teams spend a ton of their budget on acquisition when there's just as much opportunity with uh, cross sell, upsell, and you know customer advocacy, the the retention piece of it, all of those things that mar- marketing can have a positive ROI on uh, when they they spend dollars wisely in that area. Something you touched on early there kind of intrigued me. You know, sales and marketing alignment is. A hot topic these days. Everyone's got an opinion on it. Seems like everyone's talking about it. What was your experience in working with sales? What was some of their first reactions? How did they approach working with you as you requested to sit in on some calls? Tell us a little bit about their uh, to give some granularity to you know a hot topic that kind of is thrown around a lot. Yeah, I think they were definitely excited because that alignment was kind of missing before. I mean, there was always kind of marketing people working for the team, but coming from more of a traditional SaaS and B2B background. Uh, and they were just excited to be able to talk to me and like show that I was willing to to work with them. And they weren't will, you know, they weren't gonna hide anything from me. They were very open and honest with everything because, you know, we're kind of codependent on each other, you know, marketing needs sales and sales needs marketing in a sense. Uh, to help build that pipeline and, and make sure we're working together cohesively. So it, it helped me learn a lot of gaps too and what was going on and what their kind of needs were on top of understanding the customers and buyers. That alignment was really big for us and crucial. And even even being a, a smaller team, it doesn't matter if you're a large team or a small team, I think that alignment just needs to happen. And it avoids a lot of miscommunication and missteps to just have some kind of either weekly meeting or just keep keep informed of what's going on on both sides of the front so we're all we're all on the same page. Mm-hmm. So what were your next steps uh, from there, Todd, to kind of bring it all together as you identified some of the business challenges, did some research on your industry, competitors, talking to sales? What were some of your next steps to start testing uh, the waters in some of the areas that you felt like this is a direction I need to go with our marketing efforts and, and our marketing spend? Yeah, so I think at that point, a lot of people in marketing might start executing. I still did not execute anything at that point. Uh, I think there were still some more questions we needed to ask. And I, I think a big part of a marketer's job is being a researcher and just kind of analyzing a lot of things. So I kind of looked at what weren't we doing before? What were we doing that wasn't working? And then kind of comparing that to what competitors were doing in that same space. So you know, I don't ever copy what competitors are doing because even though we might have a similar, you know, prospecting and buyers and customers, it doesn't necessarily mean what works for them is going to work for me. But I like to kind of understand what they think is working or what is working. And it helps me identify some gaps maybe that are underutilized or something that we could apply to our own marketing. Uh, so that was kind of like the last step before starting was really figuring out, you know, who else in our space is is doing certain things, and that kind of helped me narrow everything down a little bit further. Mm-hmm. As you started to prepare to execute in this kind of last stage of these three steps that you're talking about here, Todd, what were your thoughts on focusing on short term results and long term results? Did you did you start with short term with the plan to move towards more long term, or did you take kind of a, a double pronged approach to work on? things that you identified that fell into uh, onto either side of that spectrum? Yeah, it was kind of both at the same time because it actually was able to... I was able to tie all of it together, kind of comes full circle. So at that point, uh, short term, obviously, is a good thing. It's kind of faster results. So you know, to generate results quicker is kind of... You, know, you have to kind of pay to play almost. So uh, there's other ways we could have gone about some of that. But for me, kind of seeing some of the gaps in some of the advertising funnels... And we had, you know, we were a profitable company. We had the money for some spend. It made sense for us to test the waters on various accounts. So, you know, either Google or LinkedIn or Facebook. And we know the kind of people we want to target at this point, you know, because we did that research and kind of laid it all out. Uh, and I know the kind of company sizes and the wish list of sales and who they want. So we're able to kind of put that in front of them quickly. Uh, and then kind of look at back again at the competitors, what kind of ads they're doing. Well, let's do the opposite of that. Kind of create different kind of content to see what's going to be. and it's a lot of A/B testing in the beginning, of course. But that's a great way right away to start generate some kind of leads off the bat. And then, of course, it helps with that brand visibility play because now your your name and your company is kind of getting in front of more people and more job titles that would make sense and would be interested in our product. Mm-hmm. Um, and then, kind of tying in that long term, so you know we know from the beginning that you know a challenge for us was brand visibility and being a leader in the space. 
So I was able to take that right away and say, okay, well, content marketing is probably going to be a big thing for us because that'll put us as a leader if we generate quality, consistent content. You know, it helps with the brand visibility because we're able to promote that content anywhere and everywhere our audience is hanging out. Plus, we can use that for advertising. So it all kind of comes together right there. You know, and then you have the SEO side of it where I can start targeting long term keywords within the content. But that was kind of like the side piece of it because I was more interested in doing the quality. And if you look at some of the recent Google updates and topics, they're more concerned with quality now. Of course, keywords helps, but the quality of the content is what matters. They want to put the best stuff forward. So for us to be the leader in the space, content is going to play a big part of that. But that also takes time, right? That's that's a long term goal because until you kind of shift everything and your people are realizing how great your content is and you're constantly pushing out good stuff, it's going to take some time. But you know, after the first six months or so of us doing this, you know, all of a sudden the results start really really high for some terms. And people are, are seeing us and coming to us through our content, which is a big part of it. So yes, it didn't initially generate a ton of results in the beginning, but it's more of a long-term play. And you know, looking at our competitors too, you know, not to knock them, they're all doing content, but maybe one or two of them was really doing great content. So you know, they were doing more generic stuff. So I realized that there is an opportunity there to kind of overtake some of what they could have been writing about. And now mm-hmm. that we're in that position... They're transitioning into writing better content, but we've kind of been there first. So people are kind of mm-hmm. trusting us a little bit more. Mm-hmm. So that was kind of like the long term approach, but that worked out for us in the long run. So because of what I knew in the beginning and the research, I was able to kind of revamp our whole content, understand that content marketing is going to play a big role in a lot of things. And that's what helped determine me for paid advertising too, because now I have great content to use in paid ads. And you can see full circle right there. Everything is all tied together then. Uh, and of course, there's other things we did in between, but those two drove the big factors right away to help us get to where we kind of needed to be based on what the CEO and sales had to say. Mm-hmm. Yeah, kind of coming full circle to to where you started. You know, one identifying challenges from the CEO and sales, and then really getting to know your customers in the industry, moving beyond just working with sales and customer success, and then you know identifying your short term and long term goals, um, and doing a little bit more research than uh, most people might before you start uh, jumping right in with both feet to executing. Uh, I love this framework that that you laid out, Todd. It sounds like it has been delivering some results for you in, in the short time you've been heading up marketing at Everyone Social. If anyone listening to this, Todd, would like to follow up with you, ask any questions either on this topic or just stay connected or find out more about what Everyone Social is doing, what's the best way for them to go about reaching out and finding you guys? Yeah, so you can visit our website, just everyonesocial.com. Uh, I'm highly active on LinkedIn, so you can just search my name, Todd Kunzman. You'll, you'll find me pretty quick. Uh, if you have any questions in our space or just marketing in general, uh, I'm, I'm pretty open to, to talking to people. So my email is just tkunzman at everyonesocial.com. I love it. This has been a great conversation, Todd. Thanks so much for being on the show, man. Appreciate it, Logan. Digital marketing agencies have a tough job. You have to stay on top of the latest marketing strategies for your clients and your agency. What if there was a way you could address both at the same time? Imagine your agency putting out content with greater quality and quantity. Envision bringing your clients a turnkey solution for one of B2B marketing's fastest growing media strategies, podcasting. You know all those clients asking for your help with their account-based marketing efforts? Picture being the first to bring them the idea of content-based networking, showing them the proven strategy for breaking coveted accounts. Here's the concept. Sweetfish Media is looking to work with a limited number of innovative agencies interested in a new partnership model. We produce a podcast for your agency. You introduce the power of podcasting and Sweetfish Services to your clients. Everybody wins. Learn more at sweetfishpartners.com.